What is your reaction to the word obey? Does that word garner a good reaction from you? Does it make you feel warm and fuzzy or overflowing with joy? Personally, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. I think it makes me feel that way because the word calls on me to submit myself to someone or something. I can be unsure of the someone or something that I am being called on to submit myself to. Also, I can be unsure if to obey is really to my benefit. If it is to my benefit, does the benefit outweigh the cost? I think the uncomfortableness with the word obey arises from an issue of trust, an issue of someone or something having more authority over me than myself alone, and do I trust that someone or something that I am obeying? Did you know obey is not a bad word? It can have that connotation because it can be used to force or dominate in a bad way, but there are many instances of obedience that are good and healthy such as obedience when proper orders are given, obedience to traffic lights, obedience in following right directions, obedience to proper discipline. Obedience is not a bad thing when the right and necessary things are obeyed. It's when the wrong things are obeyed and when one is forced in a wrong way or manipulated into obedience when it is bad. The good and bad should not be blurred and make it seem like any obedience is basically bad. Even the word obey can make people bristle, but I want to say that it's not always a bad thing. How it is used and if what you are obeying is good or bad makes the difference. For instance, obeying God is not a bad thing. It's the best thing. Also, he is the only one I can fully trust to be right every time. I remember this line from an old black and white movie I've watched several times. It goes something like this. One character says to another, You're picky. And they reply, I'm not picky. I'm easily satisfied with the best of everything. I liked that line. While it is rare for most people to have the best of everything in life, we have the ability to choose the best when we choose to obey God. I have realized that His will is best. So when I am obeying Him, following Him, making choices that please Him, I'm choosing the best. I hope as Christians we have enough fervency and drive to want the best. I hope we care about that. I can settle for average in a lot of other areas in my life, like in what I wear or if dirty dishes are left sitting in the sink overnight. I can settle for less than the best in things like that, but in terms of God and making choices that please Him, I hope we will aim for the best at every opportunity we get. I have not come to understand this fully yet, but I have come to understand to a degree that it makes me happy when I am able to successfully obey the Lord. I have understood to a degree that I can find joy in obeying God. How do you define success in life? To me, what makes a person's life successful is when God's will is done in it and with it. When a person is obeying God and following Him, then His will is being done in it and with it. Like I said, I have not come to understand this fully yet, but I have understood to a degree that my aim is to obey God, and when I'm doing that, that brings me joy. Sometimes it is a struggle, but when that struggle is won, it is a happy thing for me. Maybe it sounds silly, but it's simple as well. I myself am pleased when I bring pleasure to the one I love. I want to please God, and I think it does please Him when anyone obeys Him. Of course, my flesh hates this, but my spirit loves this. There is a cost, particularly to my flesh, and so that's why it hates it. But the benefits outweigh the cost every time. 
In addition, it's obedience not motivated by fear or by trying to earn points with God or man. It's an obedience motivated by love. Because he loves us and we love him. That's all. I said it's an obedience not motivated by trying to earn points with God or man. I trust I don't have to explain why obedience to God should not be motivated by trying to earn points with man. What I mean by it's an obedience not motivated by trying to earn points with God is that, yes, you obey God because you love him, but you're not trying to get him to love you more because of your obedience. He loves you already. His love for you is sure and secure. His love is not a tentative thing like how people often love, where one day it seems they love you, and another day it seems they don't, and it ebbs and flows with their mood. God's love is steady. He loved us before we loved him. To imagine he can love you more than he does already would be to presume his love for you is not already perfect and complete. In addition, he loved us when we were still sinners before we obeyed him at all. Our obedience is our response to his love and is a natural response to being born again and being continually transformed into his image. Here is an imperfect illustration to hopefully help explain what I mean. Have you ever given a gift to someone you love? In their response to your gift, you might notice that they want to do something in return or are thankful and are expressing that in obvious ways. Maybe they are now actively looking for ways to please you. They want to love in return. Maybe they ask you, what did I do to deserve this gift? In my mind, they didn't do anything to particularly deserve it. The gift was given to them by me because I loved them. That's all. My love for them was already there, and it was because of that that I gave them the gift. My love was there before their response of love and thankfulness. Their response wasn't going to earn points with me and get me to love them more. I loved them already. That's all. That's what I mean when I say God loves you already. I have experienced when the person I gave the gift to is so thankful that they are intensely looking for anything they can do to love or please me in return, and I feel like saying, calm down, you don't have to do anything extra, I love you already. You don't have to work at making me love you more, just enjoy the gift. I don't know, but I sometimes wonder if the Lord feels that way when his children try so hard to do things to somehow earn more of his love when he loves them fully already. He loves you already. May our response be simply loving him in return. Not to earn points with him or earn more of his love as it is already fully there, but just to love him in return. I don't know, but when you can understand that he already loves you, and that it is sure, it brings a lot of peace. I find that it also protects a person from needing love from the wrong sources, or feeling like they need to be affirmed all the time by others, because these needs of love and affirmation they are already getting from God. I realize God's love can be a difficult thing to grasp. Unfortunately, I think it is difficult because a lot of people don't even know what love is. Many have probably not experienced it from people they can physically see with their own eyes and who have said with their words that they love them, let alone imagining that God, who they cannot see, could love them. It's really something to be thankful for if you know what love is. I mean what it really is, not the dysfunctional and weird supposed love that a lot of people think is love. We need have no fear of someone who loves us perfectly, 
His perfect love for us eliminates all dread of what he might do to us. If we are afraid, it is for fear of what he might do to us and shows that we are not fully convinced that he really loves us. So you see, our love for him comes as a result of his loving us first. God's laws are perfect. They protect us, make us wise, and give us joy and light. God's laws are pure, eternal, just. They are more desirable than gold. They are sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb, for they warn us away from harm and give success to those who obey them. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me, and because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living, so that you will become holy. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So there is now no condemnation awaiting those who belong to Christ Jesus. For the power of the life-giving Spirit, and this power is mine through Christ Jesus, has freed me from the vicious circle of sin and death. We aren't saved from sin's grasp by knowing the commandments of God, because we can't and don't keep them. But God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent his own Son in a human body like ours, except that ours are sinful, and destroyed sin's control over us by giving himself as a sacrifice for our sins. So now we can obey God's laws if we follow after the Holy Spirit and no longer obey the old evil nature within us. Those who let themselves be controlled by their lower natures live only to please themselves, but those who follow after the Holy Spirit find themselves doing those things that please God. Following after the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace, but following after the old nature leads to death because the old sinful nature within us is against God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their old sinful selves, bent on following their old evil desires, can never please God. But you are not like that. You are controlled by your new nature, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that if anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ living in him, he is not a Christian at all. Yet, even though Christ lives within you, your body will die because of sin, but your spirit will live, for Christ has pardoned it. And if the Spirit of God, who raised up Jesus from the dead, lives in you, he will make your dying bodies live again after you die, by means of this same Holy Spirit living within you.